What up, though? Live Hollywood stuff uh, from Hollywood Studios. You feel me? It's so easy, convenient to say Hollywood because I feel like I'm on Beverly Hills when I be coming in this joint. You feel me? Rodeo Drive. You feel me? But I gotta take that trip out to the Bay with you, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that's something I really want to be able to link up, man. For real, for real. I gotta take that Oh, for sure. You feel me? So, look at this, man. Devin Booker, that boy, look at that, man. He, you know, I call him a scorer who can shoot. You know what I'm saying? Because the brother can get some buckets, man. Boy can get some buckets. But I always felt like him and Chris Middleton will kind of neutralize each other because they kind of, you know, two ends of the same spectrum. You know what I'm saying? One a scorer that can shoot, one a shooter that can score. Um, but, man, Milwaukee, boy, Milwaukee. I don't know why they tried to come back and run it through Giannis. And this is something, you know, I, I feel like Coach uh, Budenholzer, man, this is where he really lacks um, because he seems stubborn. You know, you want to play the same way, the same style. And, I mean, it's working, but even the good coaches adjust. You know what I mean? And see that wide open camera. Why is camera paying wide open in transition? All right? That that just makes no sense, man. Now, they come down. Look at this. Give it to Giannis and clear out. Don't get me wrong, man. Giannis could do that. But Giannis not about to do that every play, bro. He not about to do that every play for a whole 48 minutes. You know what I mean? At some point, you got to run it through Drew, man. Drew Holiday, to me, is the alpha on that team. You know what I'm saying? Giannis a dog. Chris a dog. But Drew, Drew the alpha. You know, and the only way for him to really keep Drew consistently in the game, man, is he has to run the offense through Drew. You know what I'm saying? Drew ain't going to shut down CP3, but at least he's going to make him work on the other end. You know what I'm saying? You let Giannis kind of play like y'all had uh, Brooke Lopez playing, bro. Look at this. Listen, man. CB3 had his way. Yeah, CB3, he did his thing. And he thought he started off a little, you know, a little slow. Man, he was just getting his feel for the game. He was just getting his little feel for the game, seeing what was going on. And then after that, it was a wrap. <laughs> I'm talking about OV, though, all right? I mean, look at him, man. Look, look at the use of this pick, bro. I love the pick and roll. Look, they walk you up. You gave me too much space. I didn't got to see the hoop for three seconds, bro. It's a wrap. Right. You feel me? Now, Booker, up top. Look how they got everybody spaced out. Who going to come help? As soon as you come help, he can dump it off to Aiden. You know what I'm saying? Or he can kick it out for a long three. Now, check this. Okay, boom. Boom. See how this, see how this works? This is what they got to do on the other end, bro. But it, keep right. Run Drew. Oh, hold on. Look at that. Boy, run Drew. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest, this game was close until like the end of the second, the third. It definitely was a good game. You know what I'm saying? That third quarter. And I feel like, you know, they do, I think Milwaukee do things like, bro, here, bro. Milwaukee do things like they want to uh they want to just run everything through Giannis and Chris, and then all of a sudden when they not hitting, it's oh yeah, let's get Drew in the game. No, bro. If you know anything about defenders, and they got a prime defender on their team in Giannis, when Giannis get involved defensively, his offense goes up. He get a block, couple rebounds, you know what I'm saying? Get a steal in transition. It's a wrap. 
You know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden he can hit you for 10, 12 points straight. You know what I'm saying? He can come down dominating three different areas. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And it's all good. Drew the same way, but Drew a guard. They don't have no other point guards on that team. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they got DJ Augustine, but DJ Augustine not by he too little. DJ got game, and if he knew how to, you know, if he utilized DJ with Connington and Portis, you know what I'm saying? He could actually work something though because DJ could get all of them buckets. Yeah, you gonna lose something on the defensive end. But you're not gonna lose nothing on the offensive end. You know what I'm saying? So look, all of a sudden it's a 14 point lead. Bro, they can't look at that. Look at Drew. Now CP3 right back down. Look, bounce pass. Hey, look at that. So beautiful the bridges. Look at that. Look at that. And then eight on the cleanup. You see that spacing? Hey, it's right retarded. There. He out there living a good life. Lopez, man, his jumper has came so far, bro. Lopez was always a dog, though, to me, man. I always liked the Lopez crazy man. Oh, my God. Did you see that move? Did you see CP3? Wait, you got to back that up. Off the wing, threw the leg off the pink, cross from the right to the left, one dribble into the paint with the hezzy, and then act like he gonna drive it and throw the odd lob. Oh my god, bro! Listen, that's a, that's a different type of ball control to do that, man. That's different. I was outside earlier trying to work on my shit. I seen CB3. I'm like, let me get the tennis ball out, baby. Get my shit back in order. CB3 major feels good. <laughs> it's a wrap, man. So, you know, CP3 hungry, man. He is hungry, okay? Drew Holiday, the only person they got on that team. That's going to even lightweight give CP3 problems. But if they don't find a way to get him or his offense rolling early, man, this is going to be a short series. They might fuck around and win in five. Yeah, but. Say it again. Sorry. Sarge. Dario Sarge. Yeah, he tore uh, ACL, uh, right ACL. Well, it's a partially torn, but still. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he out for the series. It's slow. It's slow for the Pope. But now this will make it interesting, though, with Phoenix and that. Because Sarich is kind of like a point four. He kind of reminds me like a like a Boris Dial, in a sense. So... I want to see how the evolution of Cameron Payne running the second unit and how they're, how they're going to incorporate Jalen Smith, the rookie that they drafted number 10 in the past, in last year's draft, you know what I'm saying, on the past draft. I feel like um, he going to be needed, bro, because Bobby Portis, bro, I don't think Sarge could take Bobby Portis, bro. I just, I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? And if they let Bobby Portis loose, like if they really let him loose, you know what I'm saying? Huh? Did you just see that move? I'm listening. Mm -mm. And this too, like Booger just broke that boy off to a mask. Man, Booger and CP3 in that backcourt, bro. I think the Bucks going to win tonight. I said that. I said the Suns was gonna win the first game. The Bucks gonna win a uh, game two and game three, and then Phoenix gonna win the next three. It's gonna be over. 
You feel me? That's how I, that's how I've been predicting it. That's how I got it. Like Phoenix come out, they gonna get their first one. It ain't even the finals. The CP3 don't face some adversity. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even a real coming coming of age for uh, for Milwaukee if they can't win one of the first games on the road. You know what I mean? And and I've always said I think you know I th- I feel like Milwaukee could win one in Phoenix, but I feel like Phoenix could win two in Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like as a road team, um, Phoenix just got a little more edge on with CP3 as leadership. Want to try something? What's that? Give me a second, bro. Give me a second. I'm doing that. Give me a second. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I put more faith in CP3 in the clutch or him trying to take the crowd out of the game. Um, I feel like like I say, man, I feel like Drew Holiday could do this shit, bro, but I just don't – Mike Budenhauser don't move me, man. I like him as a coach. You know what I'm saying? I like him as a regular season coach, but, bro, in these playoffs, bro, he don't move me. Listen, and Booker didn't even take over last game. Yeah, he really did. You know what I'm saying? That was really just CP3 and Aiden. And Booker just, you know. But if Booker get hot, man, listen. Did you see what he did to the Lakers, bro? 47 in the closeout. He came right back and got the triple dub on, uh, on, uh, who's that? Not Utah. That was, uh, the Clippers. That was the Clippers. First game, triple dub. Huh? Yeah, I said they played the Clippers last round, too. Yeah. Triple dub, first game, 40, 11, and 13. Like, bro, if Booker started playing crazy, and I, and, but see, that's what, you know, and this is another thing I like about Milwaukee, though, because Chris Middleton, a dog. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Facts. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man. I uh. Chris, Chris, you know, this year, um, over the last couple seasons with Chris, you know, I seen he could shoot. Um, I felt like last season, um, no, yeah, the season was that, that's the season they lost to Toronto. So that was two years ago. So they lost to Toronto that season. I'm like, okay, Chris could really shoot. Like, he could shoot, shoot. He can't just, like, he can shoot, shoot. Okay, that's cool. So, then he came out last year, uh, the year the Lakers won, and I noticed he had uh, not only a, a mid-range, but his shoot off the dribble was crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's either, especially either going right or going left. Like, if he pull it, if he see it, you can get your eye dotted. Oh, yeah, but, man. He was, yeah, he was bumping that ass last game. But this year... He added a handle, and I feel like that's the most underrated part of his game right now is his dribbling ability. You know what I'm saying? He not as a dribble a lot, but he he kind of remind me of and do what he got to do. He get straight to it. It ain't like no no AI type shit. You know what I'm saying? He ain't getting fancy. He just he just get the job done with you know what I'm saying. But I, but I feel like he can though. He remind he got a like a Durant slash Clay type of thing going on with his dribbling. I feel like like if he need to break it out on you, you getting this work. You feel me? But he gets you. You know he gets you for you know thirty five, forty, like fifty dribbles. You know like fuck it, I got you. You know so. But I, I like I like I like Chris, I like Dave, I like the big three on both teams. Um, I feel like 
each big three complements the other well. Um, I just feel like Monty Williams figured it out. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, man. It's it's not too much to figure out. You get Chris Paul, he's quarterback in your team. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? But Drew Holiday don't get enough love, man. He don't get enough respect. I think he did, or it was either this year or uh, a couple years ago. Um, Yeah, that um, that boy Drew, boy, that nigga, man, he he always end up in these crazy situations, you know. He had it going in Philly, then Philly want to do the process, you know what I'm saying? He had it going in New Orleans, and then Anthony Davis like, man, I'm about to slide, you know what I'm saying? Then he get over there and he gets he get to the Pelicans, he don't really have nothing. You give him Zion. And now all of a sudden he's like a lost figure. Like I don't understand why he couldn't have th- like when they got Lonzo Ball, bro. I'm like Lonzo, Drew, Ingram, Zion. That's fire. You feel me? You could just run the game through Drew. But they're like, no, we gonna run it through Zion. And don't get me wrong, Zion. That, that that nigga raw. <laughs> this nigga Zion is fucking phenomenal, bro. I'm hearing he want to fight him too. I said, I I he bit. Hey, you know who he kind of remind me of a little bit? A big ass Kalia Elamine. Remember Kalia Elamine? <laughs> <Are> you got. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> he was shifty as fuck, though. He hit you with the move. <laughs> that is so, but, oh, so even outside of the finals, though, right? I um, you know, been pondering about the Cavs and these picks. You know what I mean? Um, but oh wait, before I transition, man, I I got I, I'm gonna say this so I can get this out here, man. I got the Bucks winning tonight. Um, I think the Bucks probably might win by five. Um, that's my prediction. Now I thought the first game was gonna be closer. I think. What did that end up with? Like a four point game. No, I thought that was like a 10-point game or something. Because I said it would it would probably be like a three-point or one possession game, three-point game. What uh I don't even remember how the last game ended. What was the score? Oh yeah, they lost by 13. Okay. They lost by 13. Because I thought it was only gonna lose by three. They lost by 13. But tonight I'm saying uh I'm saying Milwaukee by five. Um, I think uh, I think Drew Holiday has a good game. You know, I'm I'm saying this with the faith that Mike Budenholzer are thinking about how they closed out the Hawks and how much freer his team played when he ran all the offense through Drew Holiday. You know what I'm saying? And you know you want Giannis to if you want Giannis to be even some semblance of a closer. You got to have somebody that's going to make everything go. You know what I'm saying? You know, we could argue 
if Booker or CP3 to close are on Phoenix. And that's that's a quality argument to have. That's good. You know what I mean? But Giannis ain't a closer. Middleton close. For real, for real. You probably prepare him to take that damn shot. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and shoot it. Push that goddamn button. <laughs> for real, man. Uh, no, but um but yeah, so that's that's what I got. I got the bugs tonight. Bugs my five. Um it, it probably go, you know, it. I mean, they put up what 223 last game as a whole. I'm going to go under 223 because I don't believe if it's a shootout that that's in Milwaukee's best interest. You know what I'm saying? Keeping this at you know a 110 type of game. That's that's Milwaukee's edge right there. If they don't do that, it could get slow. And I think the over under look and the over under tonight is two twenty one. <laughs> so I still got some free bets, but I'm waiting. I'm gonna use Frank Ingram to win the title. I gotta come up. I gotta come up off my free bets on the underdog. I ain't gonna make no money off the no. free bets. You um you uh you gotta excuse me man because it, it get a little low sometimes so I don't you think but um this did you see my tweet earlier about an hour ago about an hour hour two hours ago so I'm look I so I it was it was on the on the lines of uh. You know, watching, entertaining the trading of Colin Saxton, right? I don't like this one bit, right? And I'm saying that I don't like it. But then, you know, after I tweeted it, I retweeted it, and I said, you know what? We going to look at Jared Allen because we can get more back for Jared Allen. And I like, I like our backcourt. You know what I'm saying? And I like the idea of our backcourt having uh, Mobley and Jared Allen because I feel like that just leaves a core role to really grow his game and become something. I'm like, if they get huh? boys, that's how I feel. If they get them other boys, let's be big down there, man. <laughs> let's have Allen and Big Mo, man. Let's be big out there because there's some big boys on this East. No, oh, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? They're having that undersized backcourt, man. Like, you know, but I will say this, bro. I do like Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Kaminga, though, bro. I ain't going to hold you. I like both of them. You know what I'm saying? And if you told me the Cavs could keep they three and they could probably move Love and Saxon and get the fourth or fifth pick, and they was going to take, you know, and they said, hey, we going to keep Allen. We going to move. We going to keep McCoy at the three, put Suggs at the two, and put Kaminga at the four. I would actually be open to that with Allen at the five. You know what I'm saying? I would be open to that. I don't like the idea of moving Colin because I just like, – Colin and Garland, like that. Huh? I said, you know how I feel about Young Bull. Young Bull got special. Oh, yeah, no doubt. You feel me? And they games complement each other so much, bro. He get better every year, too. You know what I'm saying? And right, though. And he love being in Cleveland, though. And this is why I like Mobley so much. But I ain't going to lie and say Kaminga ain't growing on me. I already, I've been like Suggs. But <laughs> Suggs not a top three pick to me. I wouldn't take Suggs in the top three. 
I wouldn't take Kaminga in the top three. Huh? Kaminga six eight. Come on, Kaminga six eight with like a seven one wingspan. You know what I'm saying? But Kaminga, bro, Kaminga looked like he could turn into the best player in this draft, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Kaminga looked like that's I ain't gonna lie, bro. He already stellar on deep, huh? Who? Kaminga. As far as who they really like, I'm hearing him more than everybody else. You hearing Kaminga more than everybody else? Yeah. I ain't going to hold you, bruh. <laughs> if they felt like, I, man, bruh, Kaminga looked like he could be the best player in the draft, bro. I ain't going to lie to you. I say that with, you know, without pre prep, just impulsive thinking, like looking at his tape. Looking at his tape, when you look at Jalen Green tape, bro, he got a developing handle. Um, it's definitely decent for right now, but he got a developing handle. Um, his shot of work in progress. He played good D. He played it like, bro, he kind of remind me of a Coral a little bit. Uh, like I, I feel like yeah. if them yo two on the wings, bro. You giving people some problems, okay? I'm the one who really get that shot because he's going to get it, man. Because he's a bucket getter. He can get the bucket. No, he can get some buckets. But I, I do wish he was a little bit taller. So, if, so I ain't going to lie. <laughs> if, they, if they chose, like, like how I look at it is you need a point guard, right? So, Garland – because of his ability to run the offense and stretch the court, it's hard to validate moving him. Because ultimately, that's a skill set you're going to need to replace. I love Young Bull, too. Him and Allen got skill sets that's replaceable. You know what I'm saying? Finding a nigga that can score and be hungry Find a nigga that's gonna play in the paint and and dominate boards and blocks is more replaceable than a nigga who can actually pass, dribble, and stretch consistently. Right, hey, and that's what. Um, oh, so, what's the name, name Luan got to do? He got to eat. Who? Oh. He do. He so so you figure like this. If I got Garland, <laughs> I got the number three pick. I got love contract I want to move. I got Sexton. Um Chetty really got trade value. Torian Prince got some trade value. Larry Nance has trade value. We trying to build for the future. If you wanted to say, bro. I want Kaminga and another nigga to be my 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 two of the future. Like I I can't I can't argue that. But if you replace Saxon, you gotta get a nigga that can shoot. You can't just replace Saxon for the sake of replacing because I I wholeheartedly think Saxon and Kaminga is perfect. I ain't gonna lie. Huh? So Saxon, okay. So the thing with Saxon contract is he has one more season on his rookie deal, and then he's a restricted free agent, which is when you come up for offer sheets, like what Jerry Allen is right now. So which means we have his bird rights, and if if don't nobody offer him nothing, then we don't come to a deal. Then, like in football, you could sign a tenure, you feel me, and your fifth year is a base salary. So, depending on where he's rated, his base salary for that last year could be fifteen million. 
Jerry Allen base salary, I think, is like for if he stay one year, it's like ten, like nine, nine to twelve or some shit like that. All right, Colin shit because he a top five pick. Well, he he is the eighth pick, but no, Colin was a fuck. No, Colin was eight. He was eight. You know, but being a top ten pick, Colin still his jump up. He a lottery pick, so his jump up still like shit. Still like ten if he scored twenty five. Like if he end up with twenty five points a game next year, if he get on the All NBA team, any one of them bitches, if he top five and score, that nigga contract automatically go to like one forty. Automatically, that nigga eligible for a contract for one forty. If bitch do like thirty a game and hit an All Star, his shit one sixty. You know what I'm saying? So now you gotta ask yourself: Am I building my team around just Colin Saxton? Can I build my team around Colin and Garland? You know, like I've been saying on the record, bro, I think those two could be an all-star starting backcourt for a playoff team. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Facts. His, you know, his, the way he play is really the identity of the team. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, you know, and that's the, you know what I'm saying? And this why I don't, I don't want to get rid of him. I don't, I don't like to even have a notion of him getting traded. What I do like, though, I like Kaminga, bro. Like, you know, I'm high on mobile. Right, it ain't no secret I'm how I'm over. But if they could pull off getting, huh? You know what I'm saying? I, um, you know the idea of him growing as a scorer with Allen, and you know, and I feel like a Coral game gonna really step up this year. Um, I Winner gonna shoot. Um, and I feel like this is the year where they need to really establish the top two players on the team, all right? Especially when, you know, uh, KPJ gone. You know, I, 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 I'm going to – I know I just said this shit about 14 times, bro, but I do like this nigga Kaminga, though, bro. This nigga Kaminga can fucking ball, bro. Hey, bruh, real talk, him and Kobe can be good if we got rid of that fishy-ass love contract. I think Kobe can do something, man. No, for a fact. I like, I, I like him and JB. What him and JB got going, bro, <coughs> I'm fucking with that. I'm fucking with that, you feel me? I um I, I like I like what they I like what they installing, but they need a takeover player. Um Colin is a takeover player. Yeah, you know young boy, young boy, he, he a takeover player. He need a compliment. I don't see Garland as a compliment to Saxton in that way, but as far as a backcourt mate. I don't, I don't, I, I don't see no reason to break that up, personally. But a Coro need a buddy, and I think that may be how Kobe Altman looking at it with the third pick. I got Garland and Saxton. I got a Coro. I need somebody that's gonna be able to run with a Coro. You know what I'm saying? Garland and Saxton gonna get you points, bro. You ain't got to worry about that. They going to fill it up, all right? And they got enough playmaking and growing playmaking to still get everybody else involved. So, you know, the more I'm having this, now I'm telling you, before we start having this conversation, bro, I ain't really know I was that high on Kaminga like that. 
All right? Because I've been watching Jalen Green highlights. I've been watching Kay Cunningham highlights. And, um, you know, uh, he, uh, Jalen Green and Kaminga played on that Ignite team. And, and bruh, in Jalen Green highlights, Kaminga had like six or seven highlights, bruh. That's crazy when you got highlights on another nigga highlight reel. That shit was retarded, okay? Block starting breaks, steals. And he threw Jalen Green this fucking bounce pass. That was retarded, bro. But then you see him in the individual sessions, bro. His his ball control is nice. He know how to use his body. He real aggressive. He attacking. You ain't got to ask him if he going to go to the hole to punch on somebody. He punching on whoever under there, he's, right? He's, one, he's definitely trying to punch on some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He play good D. So if you so if they looking at it like, okay, I could give cuz I don't see I don't see I don't see Jerry Allen getting a hundred million from us. I can see them getting like eighty though. Well, that's, that's, that's what he's trying to get. He they he hasn't said anything. The media saying a hundred. You know what I'm saying? But he hasn't said anything. I don't see him getting a hundred. I see Kyler getting a hundred before him. And I don't think Colin necessarily earned a hundred yet. So Allen ain't hurt nowhere near that shit. All right. But if they wanted to get Colin like like the four year ninety million dollar deal, which I think they're gonna offer him like they did Kyrie, I'm perfectly fine with that. Right. Green, you know what I'm saying? He go, he can be like that. I, I can see him being better than Pat Bell. Like you know how aggressive and ignorant. Like you know how Pat Bell is. You know what I'm saying? And, and on some uh, like Rondo, just one of them players that just that gritty. You know what I'm saying? He one of them old. He one of them gritty players. You feel me? He definitely one of them gritty players. One of them old school gritty players. Oh yeah, that's a fact, man. So. You know, it's it. The draft went on the 29th. Yeah, it's, it's around the corner. Yeah, so we going live. Yeah. We going live for that thing. Definitely going live for that thing. I think I'm going to be off in the suites. <laughs> Def, definitely going live from the suites. You're going to be at the, um, the Disney and Mini. Definitely, definitely at the Disney suite. You feel me? We definitely getting this in. I that is a fact. You know what I'm saying? Live from live from ESPN home. You feel me? Orlando. Orlando fifth. They got the fifth and the eighth. Since you out there, what you got for Orlando? <laughs> well, it depends because I think Orlando is how Kaminga. So, and they've reportedly been trying to trade up. I mean, we, we'll take that five if they, um, they want to take Love's contract. <laughs> if we got to take, bro, if we got to give up, okay, yeah, for Love contract, for sure. <laughs> for sure. But they going to want something else. So, if you want, they going to want Colin. Bro. I think I, I think they going to want Jared Allen. You said who? I think they're going to want Jerry Allen. No, nah, hell no. Nah. They can't get Allen. They actually can, though. Sure they they actually can, can in my opinion. If they go get me the five, they can have Jerry Allen. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm all about betting down to a dollar. Toronto taking Jalen Suggs, bro. Or they trading that pick. They don't need Kaminga, bro. They got like three Kamingas on their team. Hold on, say that again. Toronto. What? Toronto got the fourth pick. Damn, yeah, Toronto do got the fourth pick. Damn. So Toronto taking Jalen Suggs, bro. Damn. 
unless he fly off in the first three picks, they taking Jalen Suggs, bro. He's a Raptor. Flat out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jalen Green, that's a fact. Jalen Green going one. Jalen Green's going one. Yeah, because I'm here. Um, because at first I was here in Detroit when it, um, Cunningham or whatever his name is. Right. <laughs> no, listen. So, this is the thing, right? And I'm gonna keep stressing this about y'all. Excuse me, I gotta step out right so you might have some background sound. This is my thing about about um, Detroit. Detroit is not ready to win now. But they close. They really is still assembling the team because you know they spent all that money last year on uh, on a uh, big man. You know they brought in Mason Plumley. They brought in uh, who's that? Mason Plumley. They brought in Jeremy Grant. Uh, they brought in Josh Jackson. You feel me? They drafted Sadiq Bay. So it was really going. And now, I mean, and they, then, they, then they drafted uh, uh, Killian Hayes, too. I can't forget that. So they got all that going. All right, what they missing? Jeremy Grant showed that he could be a scorer. And he's still a growing scorer. And Jeremy Grant only like, I think he's like 20, 27. You know what I'm saying? So he really in his prime growing his scoring game. He already played deep. He already played on the wing. You already can rebound. So that ain't what you worried about. But you do know he's still growing as a scorer, and he needs somebody that's going to run with him. This is where I like Jalen Green over Kay Cunningham for them because Jalen's still going to take a year or two to get his full game going. He's going to be aggressive early, but they got Killian Hayes. You don't necessarily need another wing. They got a bunch of six, seven, six, eight, six, nine guys. They need a slender dual guard. You know what I'm saying? That could really put them to the next level. I like K and and Houston. Um, I feel like him going to Oklahoma State, him being because I feel like. He definitely NBA ready right now. K ready right now. You put K on your team, bro. You going to the playoffs? You got the right pieces. Hold on. You know, so so K. You know his. Who is this ignite? Yeah, bro. Look at that. That's Jalen. No, that's Kaminga, bro. Yeah, you know, you know, I love me some G Lee and, and all the. Now you the real MVP for breaking this up. <laughs> I'm lagging a little bit, so y'all. So I'm seeing the highlights a little late. Yeah, man. Look at this, bro. Bro, him, him with uh. Him with a Coro, bro, that'd be fire. I mean, you think about this though. I mean, you I mean, in today's NBA, you need you need a a, a versatile lineup that could switch off and stuff. Yeah. It's not a lot you can really do with Garland and Saxon, but them two niggas will definitely play the passing lane. You're not about to just be shitting on them. This ain't about to happen. You know what I'm saying? They going to do something. But having Jared Allen down there allows you to let your wings play a little more freer, a little more range here. I want to keep Allen, but, man, he's young too, man. I don't know about all that bread he's trying to get right now. But I don't know about the bread side. You said who, Green? No, like Allen. I said I want to keep Allen. I like Allen too. So, and it's crazy because I've been Mobley, Mobley, Mobley since last year. But having this conversation with you right now, bro, 
Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm on Kaminga. I'm on the Kaminga train. I think I just I think I just kind of switched up live publicly because Kaminga game is fire, bro. I definitely won't have no problem with my boy Mobley, though. No, I love Mobley for sure. You know what I'm saying? But if Kobe Altman said, "Hey, I got Garland and Saxon. I got a center. I need to solidify my wings." I think Kaminga with a core role would help me defensively, help me on the speed side, help me with today's NBA. Um, I think he can grow into a star. Um, you potentially got, you know, four guys that could turn into real stars with Allen, and you got the bird rights to all of them. I really can't say that's a bad move. Pack 12, pack 10, you know. Yeah, like, you know what he doing? Nah, he, 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 he about to campaign. Watch, watch him act up in that goddamn that Olympics. Watch Love be busting ass. He campaigning. So he he is, and that's cool. Man, listen. He campaigning right now to get the fuck up out of here. That's cool, man. Long as listen. Is I hope he make good on it too. Get the fuck out of our jersey. Go ahead and do your thing. But bro, I'm gonna have to let you go because my phone dying and I got a couple you things I gotta do. Huh? I said you already know, bro, man. Man, listen, but man, if you want to, man, we can do this again tomorrow, man. I'm off tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? We can set up something, we can do it a little earlier too, you feel me? Do like a post game, man. You know, around four, I'm going huh? To, I said, yeah, we can hop on tomorrow. I know around four, I'm going to um do like a uh, what is it? It's like a little, it's like a paint and sip for the kids. So it's like a slushy, a a, a slushy and paint <laughs> smoothie. Oh, uh, that's fire! Yeah, so that's I'm raw. Do, you know what I'm saying? Do that, whatever. We could go, man. We. If you want, man, we go on the early side around like, you know, 10, 11, 12, around midday. You already know. It's a bet. So, all right, man, I'm going to hit you later on, man. It was a pleasure y'all rocking with y'all, man. We going to catch y'all later. Yeah, make sure y'all go follow him, D-Trend, everything. Hey. Yes, bless up, bro. Yeah.